Hello everyone, my name is Drago. We're gonna be talking about the Kerouac's War Drums and the Horn of Fury. We've talked about this in many of our streams about which one you should use on the open field for your marches, why which one's better than the other. All right, so as you can see in front of you, we have the Horn of Fury. Normal attacks have a 30% chance to gain an extra 50 rage. This is for a single march, okay? And then we go up to the Kerouac's War Drums, and this one has a 10% chance to grant 50 rage to the troops led by that commander plus two nearby allies. Now, the way that mechanism works inside of Rise of Kingdoms is that it will always prioritize your marches over someone else's marches. So if you have five marches, three marches, seven marches, on the field, it will target your own marches first. The same thing happens with buffs in the game regarding Joan, Trajan, etc. Now there is a major difference that you do need to pay attention to when it comes to the actual cooldown possibility of these two accessories. As you can see on Kerouac's War Drums, this effect can trigger at most once every three seconds, which means again, you trigger it, you have to wait another two seconds before it can trigger again okay whereas if you go over to the horn of fury there is no cooldown duration listed here i did do a test for you to make sure and confirm that that is the case there is no cooldown on the horn of fury when we go to turn one on this battle report we go and scroll down you can see that the horn of fury did proc on turn one and then as we scroll down to turn three the Horn of Fury did proc again on turn three. Another thing I want to note when talking about the Kerouac's War Drum is that even though it does have a uh, three second cooldown timer, if you have multiple Kerouac War Drums on your open field marches, they can proc independently and still give all of those marches the bonus rage. So I did a test on that too and have confirmed that here for you today. So on this barbarian kill turn four on this march you see towards the bottom it says alexander nevsky received the following bonus from allies this turn alex nevsky got 65 rage he got 65 rage because i have a secondary march that has a procced archer kerouac's war drum on my nebu ysg now on turn five the very next turn you can see here that alexander nevsky's equipment kerouac's war drums is in effect and you get another 50 rage. So he got 65 rage on the previous turn from the other march that's on the field, and then 50 rage for his own Kerouac's War Drum on the next turn, which means that now both of these are on a three second cooldown, although the other one is on a two second cooldown now, whereas this one just started the three second cooldown. So the more Kerouac's War Drums you have on your marches, the more often you're going to proc these things and not be on cooldown. So now that we've confirmed that there is no cooldown for the Horn of Fury, we have to get into the math of it because, again, 30% chance versus 10% chance isn't really relevant considering that one War Drums proc is actually considered to be three Horn of Fury procs if you think about it. If you have three marches on the open field, one of those has a Kerouac's War Drums on it, whereas all three have a Horn of Fury on it, we need to understand what the probability is of that one war drum proccing off versus all three Horns of Fury proccing off at one point or another in that same 10 turn cycle. It's not quite 10% and 30%, it's not quite that easy. We do have to go and look at something called a binomial probability calculator. Now this is where we get into the binomial probability calculator, which basically is gonna extrapolate the ability of using multiple 10% chance items versus one 30% chance item to get the desired result. If we have three Kerouac's War Drums giving one 50 Rage component to the march, plus two additional 50 Rage components to two other marches, either your own or somebody else's if you don't have any more marches out, you can tell that it's going to give you 150 Rage per time that it procs. To get that same amount of Rage pumped out, on an individual march, each one of those Horns of Fury would need to proc individually one time times three Horns of Fury. That means that if everything procs at the same time on a three march setup, one Kerouac War Drum is the equivalent to three Horns of Fury because one Kerouac War Drum 
will give the same rage amount to those three marches as three horns of fury without needing to use those two other accessory slots. So to get the buff on one march with a horn of fury, you have to proc it and you have a 30% chance to do that. To do it on a, a Kerouac's war drum, you have the ability to have three turns to get this to fire off because you have three times the amount of activation possibilities, which again gives us close to 25. So it's actually very, very similar to the same probability that Horn of Fury gives you, as is the Kerouac's war drum. Now, why is this important? Well, when we go to look at your marches, right, you have two accessory slots per march, and the consensus pick for best accessory in the game right now is the Ring of Doom at a 10% chance to give your march a 50% damage bonus for two seconds, and it can trigger once every five seconds. So I think somebody did, and I, I, I can't quote who it is, but wherever I read it, they did the math on it, and it ended up being like a 14 to 17% raw damage bonus depending on how big your damage factor is and if it's normal attack versus counter attack, that kind of thing, because this is an all damage bonus. Normal attacks have a 10% chance to increase damage, all damage by 50%. So you get that bonus to skill damage as well as normal and counter attack damages. There's no other accessory in the game that really can provide that kind of return. So best case scenario, all of your open field marches all of your garrison and rally marches need to have a ring of doom. That leaves one other accessory slot, or let's say you have five marches on the open field, that leaves the ability to have one more open slot for those five marches, which is five slots. So with that information, what we can then do is if we have a five march, six march, or seven march capability, you can now free up a few of the spots here when you're trying to generate rage, and instead of doing five horns of fury you can do three Kerouac war drums and effectively get the same result for the most part now obviously you can't pick where those 50 rage buffs go to whenever a Kerouac war drum procs off but again it's all about the rage generation itself it's not necessarily i want this particular march to have this amount of rage this particular march to have this amount of rage there's no way to really control that in a true open field fighting environment where you're just going back and forth and fighting all over the place. You can now do three Kerouac war drums and effectively get roughly the same result um, because of the way that the probabilities play out. That will free up two of your marches to have a free accessory slot where you can then add in, if you want to, like on Guan here, I've got a coin to generate a shield to proc his expertise. But more importantly, what I would rather do is just have one of those marches have a concealed dagger so I can be debuffing the target's health whenever I'm swarming a target down. And then same thing with the Moore's Web, debuffing the target's defense and march speed if they're cav um, as well. So I have those two extra slots. Instead of them having to be dedicated to a Horn of Fury generating rage, what I can do is I can then put those two slots into debuff accessories like these two. You can also do Vengeance. You can also do Greatest Glory if you want to, but I personally don't see them being very, very good open field. The value that you're getting based off the numbers that you're putting out, isn't nearly as beneficial as versus, say, a rally or a garrison with these two accessories because the numbers are going to be bigger because you have a 3 million or a 2 million troop capacity versus three to 440 uh, troop capacity. Now, again, the other thing that you could do is that coin. And another accessory that I think would be very beneficial in this scenario would be, would be Seth's Call. The same premise behind Kerouac's War Drums goes with Seth's Call, 10% chance, Three second cooldown, but it gives a 10% increased attack to you and two more marches on the field. Effectively, again, spreading more buffs. You kind of make with Kerouac's War Drums and Seth's Call, you kind of make almost all of your marches like Trajan or like um, Joan or Constantine, you know, stuff like that, where you're giving bonuses not only to yourself, but to allies around you, where it just helps the group. And as you can see in the KVK action that we had uh, against 960, this is some of the tactics that they were using. They're using Kerouac's war drums a lot more often than, say, a Horn of Fury. You're getting a lot more benefit to yourself as well as to your group. And the benefit of having not only the rage generation for everybody else, but the fact that it frees up those two accessory slots so you can add in a concealed dagger. You can add in, again, um, if you wanted to, you can add in a silent trial if you wanted to, if you don't have the legendary accessories. But you can add in a Mora's Web as well. Those are the top two I would go with. One, one concealed dagger, one more as web. And again, it depends on how many marches you will be bringing to the field. 
So what should your composition be depending on how many marches you are going to bring to the field in KVK? So if it's five marches, I would go three Kerouac's war drums, five rings of doom, and then one concealed dagger and one Mora's web. If it's six marches, I would go three Kerouac's war drums, one concealed dagger, one Mora's web, and one Seth's call. And if you have seven marches, I would do four Kerouac's war drums, one concealed dagger, one Mora's web, and one Seth's call. That'll give you the breadth of the spreading of the rage that you're looking for while also simultaneously opening up two or three accessory slots, depending on how many marches you're bringing out to the field to help buff or debuff, whereas you wouldn't have those things if you just went all horn and all ring. So that's the premise behind what you're seeing. And in fact, again, if you look at some of the top tier Osiris League teams and certainly some of the best open field players in KVK, they use this methodology. They use Kerouac war drums, multiple Kerouac war drums on their marches, ditch the Horn of Fury, and then go with the Kerouac war drum on multiple marches. And then that way they've freed up more debuff, more Seth's call bonuses as well. Some are actually using multiple Seth's calls as well. Three Seth's calls and three Kerouac war drums and maybe one concealed dagger, and they're eliminating the Mora's web or vice versa. Or they're doing four Kerouac's war drums and three Seth's calls and eliminating the dagger and the web altogether. That way they're getting the benefits from everything. I've seen this on a lot of high end, high tier players, high performing Osiris League teams and high performing open field KVK teams. This is the meta for the end game where you want to have the best of the best. This is what you should be focusing on going in. Again, you can never have too many rings. The ring gives you the best bonus bang for your buck for an accessory slot. But to get the rage that you need to generate the damage that you're going to do using the ring, you need to have rage pumping out. And the most efficient way to get that is with that three and four slot mechanism for Kerouac's war drums versus Horn of Fury. I hope that explanation wasn't too complex and um, that you understood what I was trying to say. I tried to add as many pictures as possible so you know what I'm talking about. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to have a conversation around this on this video. Certainly, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that too. Uh, and again, would love to get that like from you as well if you feel like I deserve it based off of this video. I will see you guys next time. Cheers, have a good one, and take care.